why time travel isn't a thing yet. We have all seen in the movies that a hero jumps into a fancy machine, press some button and boom. They are 200 years into the future or the past. But if Hollywood makes it look so easy, why can't we do it in real life? Well, let me tell you. It's not because we haven't tried. In fact, we have come so close to discovering time travel, you will be shocked when I tell you how it could actually be possible. We know that time travel may seem like science fiction, but it's deeply rooted in real life science. When you get down to physics, time travel is a more realistic thing that you might think. And believe it or not, nature itself already plays with time in some truly wide ways. But you might be wondering, back it, what's the catch? Because there is always a catch, right? Why we haven't built a time machine yet, if we are that freaking close? Well, I bet the answer will surprise you at the end of the video. But first, we need to talk about time dilation. So, what the heck is time dilation? Have you ever heard that astronauts age more slowly than we do here on Earth? Two physicists flew atomic clocks around the world on airplanes, and when they compared the clocks to those left on the ground, they found that time had literally ticked slower for the clocks in the air. And to be frank, this is not some magic stuff. It's called time dilation. The faster you move, the slower the time moves for you. And this is kinda interesting, because this is why astronauts in space age a bit slower than the rest of us. And here is another great representation that I really like. Imagine a train traveling around the Earth at extremely high speed, close to the speed of light. Now there are two observers in this scenario. A random guy on the train called and an observer standing on the ground, whose name is Pepe, watching the train speed by. According to Einstein's theory, time moves more slowly for the passenger on the train compared to the observer on Earth. This is because at speeds close to the speed of light, time dilates or slows down for the objects moving relative to the observer. The closer we get to the speed of light, the more noticeable this effect becomes. But how does it work for the observer on Earth and the random guy on the train? Pepe on Earth sees that the train moving very fast, but because he has eagle eyes, he also notices that the time on the train seems to be ticking more slowly. Meanwhile, Odin feels normal. His clock on the train ticks normally and he wouldn't notice anything strange with time. However, when the train finally stops and they compare their clock, they find that less time has passed for Odin who were on the train. This is time dilation in action. And actually this also means that in a certain way we are already time travelers, but we are not moving fast enough to make a noticeable difference. To really bend time, we would have to approach the speed of light. But wait, what if we didn't need speed? What if there was a shortcut through time itself? Well, I'm talking about wormholes. This theoretical tunnel through space-time could allow us to hop between different points in time or even different universes. You can just think of a wormhole as a bridge that could connect one corner of the universe to another. But before you would jump into the wormhole, I wanna warn you. If you see a wormhole, never ever jump into it. Wormholes are incredibly unstable. If you try to travel through one, it would likely collapse before you could even finish your journey. And it would probably tear you apart before you reach the other side. And being ripped is not healthy at all, so don't try this at home. But what if I told you that scientists have already discovered a way to keep wormholes open? In theory, all you need is something called exotic matter. This exotic matter could keep a wormhole stable, allowing us to safely pass through. But there is a small problem with this. We have never found exotic matter. But let's say we overcome all these challenges. We have built our time machine and we are ready to step into the past or the future. So what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, this is where things get really tricky. Just imagine you go back in time and prevent your own birth. Then how could you be alive to go back in the first place? Huh? Huh? This is called the grandfather paradox and it's one of the biggest barriers for time travel. Although some scientists think that time travel might create alternate timelines instead of changing the one you are in. So you could go back, change something What have you done? and create an entirely new future without affecting the one you came from. This means that you cannot simply break time, you just split it into different paths. And talking of different paths, there is even a theory that time itself is constantly branching into infinite possibilities every second. So in a sense, we all live in an infinite web of alternative timelines and time travel may be the key to discovering them. So it's even possible that we might already be living in a universe created by time travelers. To be frank, some physicists suggest that the reason the universe seems so perfectly tuned for life is that future time travelers might have come back and tweaked the past to make it just right for us. 
Think about that for a second. Every breath you take, every sunset you see, could be the result of someone or something traveling through time to ensure our existence. So where does that leave us? We've got the theory, the technology is just out of reach, and the paradoxes are mind-bending. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the impossible often becomes possible with time. Time travel isn't a question of if, but when. And when it happens, who knows? Maybe you will be the one to change the course of history.